Hello everyone and welcome back to The Israeli. Today I'm going to try and explain the Israeli political system, uh, the different parties that make up parliament, um, what they stand for, um, what is the main differences between the left and the right. Um, I'm also going to talk about the new coalition that's hopefully going to be sworn in today and if they are I'll make another video about it and what the future holds uh, according to this new coalition. And before I start this video, please anybody who's watching this and likes this content, whether you agree or disagree with what I say, um, please like and subscribe because it really helps a lot and the algorithm doesn't really um, promote my videos at the moment. So any kind of like or subscription really helps a lot. Okay, let's get straight into it. So, the Israeli parliament is built out of 120 seats, and you need 61 seats in order to build a coalition. But first, let's go over the different parties that make up um, the current um, Knesset, the current parliament, and where each one stands, and what is the points that are important for it in Israeli politics. So, the joint list and Ram, which used to be together, they are the Arab parties and they stand for more or less the same thing, which is Arab equality in I within Israel, um, changing a lot of things as far as um, giving money, how the money is uh, dispersed in the country, um, strengthening the, the Arab villages, and obviously fighting crime, which is running rampant in the Arab um, community at the moment. And on the other hand, they also support the two-state solution and, and promoting peace um, all the time. And of course, against the occupation and against the Israeli army and against all that kind of stuff, which used to be a, a big problem because in the joint list and the different parties, a lot of people there um, are seen as anti-Israel. Um, not just anti-Zionists, but anti-Israel. Um, Many of them used to call um, Israeli soldiers terrorists, and many of them um, celebrated terror acts, visited um, terrorists in jail, and visited terrorists' families. And one of them was caught um, taking uh, cell phones into the Israeli prison to, to terrorists, bringing cell phones to terrorists. And one of them was caught telling Hezbollah where they should shoot their missiles in the Second um, Lebanese War and he escaped the country because otherwise he would have gone to jail. And a lot of very controversial things that they, 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 they used to say and they keep saying in the parliament, even though now they, 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 they started to relax the way they're speaking. And so, so they'll get a bit more accepted in Israeli society, which they're not because of the way they acted. So on the one hand, they always um, go against any Israeli decision and on the other hand, they like to enjoy all the privileges that they get as Israeli citizens, and that caused a lot of resentment against them, the parliament uh, members of the Arab parties in Israeli society. And that also caused a big problem in moving forward in the peace process, because if you can't get Israelis to trust the Arab Palestinian Israelis that are serving in the parliament, that are getting paid by the country, if you can't trust them, how will you get them to trust the Palestinians. It's a big problem that right now might have a partial solution because Ram, uh, Ram um, just joined the coalition, the new coalition, which is the first time that an Arab party is joining a coalition, a Jewish Zionist coalition. Um, we had Arab ministers before and co-ministers before and Arabs in different um, Jewish Zionist parties, but this is the first time an Arab party is joining a coalition, which is a big move. Um, their leader, Mansour Abbas, is, is taking a different stand. He's saying, yes, we're still going to stand for our rights, we're still going to stand for a peace process, but we're not going to differentiate ourselves from, from Israeli society. We want to be part of Israeli society, we want to take part in the decision-making in Israeli society, and he's 100% correct about that, and I really hope um, that this little experiment works out and becomes a permanent thing where Arab parties are taking seriously and are part of coalitions. 
which before seemed crazy, but now it, it, it's actually happening, and a lot because of Bibi Netanyahu, because he knew that he couldn't build a, a government, he didn't have 61, because nobody trusts him, nobody trusts him, like people on the right, there's a majority right, but he couldn't build a right-wing government because leaders on the right don't trust him, so they don't want to sign contracts with him. So he went after the Arab parties, especially Ram, and he was the first one to give them to give them legitimacy, which allowed them now to join this coalition. Okay, so let's continue. The next one is Meretz. Meretz is a very old party. They've been around since the beginning under different names. They're a left party, a Jewish Zionist left party, which means that they believe that the Jewish people deserve to have a home of their own um, for self-determination um, and, of course, the right to self-defense and everything, but they believe in, a, in equality, a two-state solution, and reaching out for peace and, and, and dealing with our enemies um, through diplomacy and not through violence, um, holding accountable the, set, the settlers um, they are against the settlers. They think they should withdraw, that Israel should withdraw from the West Bank uh, completely. They are for um, a peace agreement, as, um, a fair a peace agreement. Um, and, and they are the Israeli left. Um, as you can see, they're, they're very secular. Um, they are for gay rights. Um, they are for women's rights. They are for minority rights. Um, they are the classic left uh, party. And they have a steady um, six seats in parliament, no matter what really happens in the country. They have steady voters that vote for them um, election after election. And they used to be much stronger. They used to have 13, I think, at their highest, maybe even 15. But now they stand at six. And even when the country goes very, very right, they still get their six parliament members. The next one is the Israeli labor, which is very much like the like the British Labour Party, it's a center, socialist center, also for the peace agreement, and, and also very secular. The next one is blue and white, very similar to Labour, maybe a little bit more on the right side of the security side. Then is Yesh Atid, um, they are a party also on the center, very similar to Labour. All these three are very similar to Labour. Um, but they want to move forward, they want to see a different kind of politics. Um, Yesh Atid wants to see a more, a more gentleman politics, a more respectful politics, um, different than the Trump politics and different than the Bibi Netanyahu politics. Now their leader um, went through a lot of, um, he went through a process, yeah? Um, Yair Lapid, he started as a news anchor on TV, um, he was never taken too seriously. He wrote many articles, um, and then he came into politics. And many people didn't like him. Many people didn't take him seriously. Many people didn't think he's smart enough, responsible enough, or capable enough uh, to do anything serious in politics. But he kept moving on and on and on. And election after election, he just improved as a politician. And to tell you the truth, the truth as a human being, he became more modest. Um, he became more open-minded and, and more democratic, um, I think. And hopefully in the future, his party will be more democratic as well. So Yair Lapid, right now, he's the one that managed to build this new coalition party. Okay, the next one is New Hope, uh, which is very similar to Likud. The only difference is that, that their leader, Gidon Saar, had enough of Bibi Netanyahu. He couldn't deal with him anymore, and he didn't want him... Uh, to be his boss, the head of his party, Likud. So he opened his new party, and uh, New Hope, and his promise was that Israel is not going to a fifth election, and he's not going to sit with Bibi Netanyahu, uh, which is what he's doing now, more or less. And the Likud, again, very similar to New Hope, uh, Tikva Chadasha. Most of us know who the Likud are. They ran the country for the last 12 years. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu ran the country for the last 12 years. And you can say today that Bibi is the Likud and the Likud is Bibi. And we'll see what happens with the Likud now that Bibi is going to um, not be prime minister anymore if the new coalition actually succeeds and survives for more than a few months or a year. Then Bibi will be in trouble and we'll have to see what happens with him and then what happens with the Likud. It's going to be very interesting to see. 
and then United Torah, uh, Yadut Torah, Ultra Orthodox, um, they go where the money is. Um, Shas, Ultra Orthodox, they go where the money is. Yamina is a nationalistic, right wing, religious uh, party, but they are mixed. They have many members in the party that are not religious. The number two, uh, Shaked, she's, she's, she's a secular, she's not religious, but she's still in the party and she's very right uh, wing. Ayelet Shaked. Now, they are in the new coalition, which makes it very interesting to see what happens. I'll go over all the rest of the parties and then we'll talk a little bit about Israeli politics. Uh, Israel Beitenu, they are a party that was, that was built for the new um, Russian immigrants that came to Israel in the 90s. In the 90s, close to a million Russian immigrants came to Israel and they were a very strong power, electoral pow power especially, and and this new party, Israel Beitenu, um, form, uh, formed uh, for, the, for, the for the immigrants. And they are very right-wing because the Russians are very nationalistic and very right-wing. And Avigdor Lieberman, he's a really Russian guy, very Zionist though, and not religious at all, extremely secular. And they cooperated with the ultra-Orthodox for years and years and years. And this time they, they said enough is enough. Um, I don't know if it's authentic or if it's just for um, political gain, but they stood their ground for the last four elections, not to go with the uh, ultra-Orthodox, and now they're part of the new coalition as well, which we'll need to see how it works because they're very secular on the one hand, but very right-wing nationalistic on the other. And then religious Zionism, Tzionut Torah, extremely right-wing. They are the ones who are making a lot of problems now. Um, Itamar Ben Gvir is one of them. He's the one that went to Sheikh Jarash, and he's the one that um, more or less leading the flag march, which I said I have nothing against, except the fact that it's becoming very nationalistic because people like Ben Gvir are leading it. And um, Smotrich, which is the head of the party, he's, well, you know, he says that he's not racist, but he is racist, and there are many reasons to prove that he is racist, but e whether he's racist or not, it doesn't matter. He's extremely dangerous because he's for, he's extremely right-wing. He believes in one country, one Israel, and that the Palestinians need to be transferred to Jordan or something of the sorts. Okay, <coughs> now we have the main parties, all the parties that are building the Israeli parliament, and there are two main subjects that interest Israelis, and they vote according to that. One is security which is, of course, the Gaza and the Palestinians in West Bank, and the second is religion. Now, they both get mixed up, and, and people sometimes choose against their interests because they choose one over the other. So the Likud, for many years, promised security, and because they are secular of sorts, many secular people voted for them because they fe felt safe to, that Israel will keep its secular nature under them. But... Neither one happened. Uh, Israel's security did not improve, and Israel sec being secular did not improve either because Likud, Bibi especially, got most of his power by joining with the ultra-Orthodox. They went with him in rain and in snow, in sun and in blizzard. Wherever he went, Bibi, they went. Up until now, they're still supporting him 100%, and they still believe something is going to happen, and he'll get back in power, and they'll be able to continue doing their thing, which is taking more money and, be, and making Israel more religious and more right-wing. Uh, so those are the two things that interest Israelis, and they vote according to this, and it depends on what time. <coughs> now, the new coalition party is built out of nine, out of eight parties. Yesh Atid is the biggest, but, but he's not going to be, Yair Lapid is not going to be the prime minister, yeah? Uh, the Prime Minister is going to be from Yumina, Naftali Bennett, who has only six uh, parliament seats. And that's because the way the Israeli political politics work, you need 61 to build a coalition, so sometimes small parties can blackmail the big parties, and this is the first time that a small party blackmails the big party uh, to be Prime Minister in order to build the coalition. But I think this is a smart move by Yair Lapid, because this way Yamina, which is the most right-wing uh, party in, in this new coalition, 
won't be able to break uh, the government because they'll be prime minister. They'll have the prime minister. So it's not logical for a prime minister to break his own government. So it works out for, for Yesh Atid. <coughs> and Yair Lapid is going to be prime minister for the other two years. So Naftali Bennett for two years and then Yair Lapid. We'll see if it lasts that long, of course. Now we have Labour and Meretz and Ram, which are, which are on the left, and they are going to fight for the peace process. But on the other hand, we have Yamina, Israel Beitenu, and New Hope, which are on the right, but let's leave Israel Beitenu out of it because they are for a two-state solution with land swamp. Yeah? So New Hope and Yamina, they are not for the two-state solution. They're against it. So we'll have to see how these parties manage to deal with each other. And when it comes to that, when Biden and Egypt start demanding that something new will happen in front of the Palestinians, well, the Palestinians and the international community will demand it as well. So we'll have to see what happens with that. And um, I believe that it's going to be on standby for at least a year until this government gets its footing. And if this government becomes stable, maybe that step will be able to be to take. But I don't think at the moment, at the moment, this government has to prove itself that it can lead Israel forward, especially when it comes to religion, to bring back some rights to the secular people who live in Israel and um, to, to change some of the rules as far as marriage, as far as, 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 as opening on the Saturday, as trans public transportation on a Saturday, different things that are very important to the majority of Israelis. And of course, with the security to, to, make, to see how they deal with Hamas yeah, and with Jerusalem. Those will be the main tests for the near future. And if they will be able to withstand those tests with Ram, with the Arab party and Meretz being in the coalition, the Israeli public will, will trust them enough to take, to take more drastic steps, which is starting or reigniting in some sort the peace process, which is going to be very interesting to see how it goes. So here we have Yair Lapid. He's the head of the biggest party in the coalition, Naftali Bennett, who is going to be the prime minister, Gidon Saar, he's the head of the, um, not the most right, but very similar to Naftali Bennett, um, uh, New Hope. Here we have Victor Lieberman, he's a very salted, very experienced politician from Israel Beitenu. We have Nitzan Horovitz, he's the head of uh, Meretz, the left party, and he's the only um, openly gay head of party in in Israel parliament. There are more gay members, but he's the first, he's the only um, head of, of a party that's gay. Yeah, here we have Benny Gantz from Blue White. And um, Mansour Abbas, he's the head of Ram, the Arab party, which is, I think this is the important story here, Ram. Ram and being with Naftali Bennett and Gidon Saar in the same coalition is going to be very interesting to see. And if this works out, we're on a very good path. We're on a very good path. And of course, Mirav Michaeli, who, who single-handedly revived the la Labour Party, who was dead. He who was dead in the water. And she came. And when, when, when the Labour Party joined Bibi's coalition in the last coalition, she was the only one in the party who did not join the coalition. She was like this lone wolf that was part of parliament, part of a uh, party that was part of a co the coalition, but she was the only one in the opposition. Very brave woman. And after the party collapsed, uh, because of that move, she rebuilt it. And, and she made it, actually, she rebuilt it and, sh and quite successfully, and they have seven seats in parliament now, when everybody thought they'll be gone, zero. So from zero to seven, that's incredible. And she did it single-handedly. And she's a woman, and she's the head of a very important party in Israel, the Labour Party, and she's also a big part of this coalition. So we'll have to see how this works out. Um, the religion and the security are two things that are going to challenge this government a lot because the ultra-Orthodox who were accustomed to have their way to get whatever they want um, to, to, to to be above the country in many, many ways, will now have to be in the opposition. And they will have to deal with rules that don't necessarily um, come 
in their interests that that are in the interests of the majority of the people in the country and we'll see how they'll deal with it and um, I believe they're going to yell and cry and 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 you know think that they are robbed they're already doing it now and uh, but we'll have to see how they do it and on the other hand the security we'll have to see how this new government deals with Gaza and Jerusalem which I'm sure are go they're going to be challenged because a new government is always challenged and with Biden, we'll have to see how they deal with it. If they are managed to deal with those two things, which are the two main pillars of Israeli politics, religion and security, then we are on the right road and, and the future seems brighter both for Israelis and Palestinians. I'm not saying that at the moment um, with Gidon Saar and Naftali Bennett, um, a peace process is actually liable or actually possible, but starting processes of building bridges between Israelis, Jews, and Israeli Palestinians is something that is definitely possible now because Ram is in the government. And from there, building bridges with the Palestinians will be much easier to do. So we'll have to see how that goes. The, those two things will be their main tests. And if they are able to withstand it, then this new coalition has, and this new way has a very big future and we'll have to see where it goes. Um, I'm always optimistic, I'm always hopeful, and like I said, if this coalition actually gets sworn in today, I'll make another video. So again, thank you very much everybody who's watched this video till the end, you guys are great. And um, please like and subscribe, it's very, very important for the channel. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.